ODDTV. I've got one that can see. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'm Jimmy Kimmel. And I'm Stephen Jimmy Colbert. We'll be your hosts for tonight's event, One World Together at Home. Together at Home was more than a virtual concert. It was a show of force. It was broadcast everywhere on all TV stations and on all streaming platforms. That fact alone was a strong indication of the sheer power behind this event. We're currently on three major American networks at the same time, NBC, ABC, and CBS, as well as social networks like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Furthermore, the list of celebrities and powerful people who appeared during that event was simply staggering with headliners such as Lady Gaga, Billie Eilish, Taylor Swift, and Celine Dion. However, this event was not only about music. The music was there to attract people. Between the performances, there were specific messages coming from powerful places. Ladies and gentlemen, the woman who put this entire evening together, Lady Gaga. Let's not kid ourselves here. Lady Gaga was the face of the event, but she was not the engine behind it. Together at Home was a massive PR campaign from the World Health Organization and the entire elite system behind it. Lady Gaga was put at the forefront of this event because her face and her name sell more than the face and the name of Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, the Director General of the World Health Organization. For the same reasons, countless celebrities were enlisted to say specific messages because celebrities are the best vehicle to transmit messages from the elite to the masses. The logo itself sums up the message of the event. The hands of those in power keep people inside their houses. At the top, the words one world, basically a call for a global government. One world order. While the event was meant to be comforting, there was something eerie about seeing countless celebrities with a somewhat spaced out look on their faces, repeat the same slogans, chant the same mantras, and sing the praise of the same powerful organizations. Here are some of the messages communicated throughout the event. Creating a COVID culture. The most obvious and annoying aspect of Together at Home was its celebration of the COVID culture. Indeed, in the past two weeks, we've seen media doing its best to normalize a world where confinement, isolation, and video conferencing were the new norm. While social distancing is supposed to be an extreme and very temporary emergency measure to prevent the spread of a deadly disease, Together at Home appears to be promoting it as a long-term way of life. The usage of video conferencing is constantly promoted for everything. In the sad world that is presented in Together at Home, all aspects of life, including arts, family, business, and education, can be fulfilled through video conferencing. In their new world, human connections depend on an internet connection. It seems they want all human communications to be recorded and monitored. Teaching children through screens was not portrayed as an emergency, last resort measure. In Together at Home, it was defined as a new kind of education. Teachers are finding new and creative ways to educate. This is a brand new way of teaching for me, and I'm sure that this is a brand new way of learning for you. I'm making it a casual Friday with my unicorn onesie. The entire concept of depriving children of human contact and having them grow up in an environment where anyone can be a potential biohazard is rather terrifying. While most of us hope that today's children will end up forgetting this insane era we're living in, it seems that they want them to bask in it to be molded by it. Some of the messages directed to children and together at home were quite upsetting. Abby Kadabi from Sesame Street was used to direct propaganda at children. 
Abby Cadabby showed children how to give themselves a self-hug by putting their arms around themselves. I know a lot of us are having some big feelings right now. I know I am. I've been spending a lot of time with my mommy and my stepdaddy. She said that when I have big feelings or little feelings or anything in between, I can just give myself a hug. That's this, a self-hug, just like that. And it's really nice. I hold myself real tight. And I take a deep breath, and I feel comforted. This isn't comforting. This is an Orwellian system teaching children how to live without human contact. The musical performances were also about the normalization of life in isolation. To prove the point that anything could be achieved through video conferencing, some performances were several webcam feeds combined together and the results were terrible. In one performance, Maluma was outside singing while the guitarist was in a basement somewhere else. There was absolutely no chemistry or synergy in these performances. There was no soul. Watch you all. Now you can't always get what you all. But if you try sometimes. Each individual was completely disconnected from the other. In some ways, these performances perfectly illustrated how we as humans are disconnected from each other due to COVID-related restrictions. And that's kind of what they want. To drive this point home, lots of messages from celebrities actually glorified life in lockdown. David Beckham said, If there's any silver lining to come of this situation, it's meant lots of time together as a family. And for this, we are grateful. The same exact words were used by other celebrities, such as the rapper Common. Very grateful to be here with Global Citizen and the World Health Organization. I stand here before you as an American, as a child of God, as a black man, and as a citizen of the human race. And I can say that I have no time in my life have I been so inspired and so grateful to be a part of the human race. They're trying to put a positive spin on the forced lockdown of the entire world. Amy Poehler said, for the past few weeks, many of us have been struggling to shelter at home. Imagine if you didn't even have that option. The homeless community is one of the most vulnerable groups when it comes to facing COVID-19. Interesting fact, the words lockdown and confinement were never used during the broadcast. Instead, the expression sheltered at home was used. Why? Because confined implies coercion from an outside force, while sheltered conveys warmth and protection. That's how far they're willing to go to manipulate minds and perceptions. Also, one must love the fact that millionaires and billionaires are telling hardworking citizens that at least they're not homeless. So why are these celebrities promoting a confined at home way of life? Because those who organized together at home are thriving from this situation. The longer it lasts, the further they can advance their agenda. promoting the global elite. The main goal of Together at Home was to put at the center stage powerful elite organizations that work at an international level, beyond national borders, such as the World Health Organization and the United Nations. They're telling people, we're taking charge of this situation. And Together at Home came at a very convenient time for the World Health Organization, which was under fire by several governments for its odd handling of the pandemic. The most damning accusation, the World Health Organization actually lobbied against travel bans from China at the beginning of the outbreak, back when it could have stayed in China. A February 3rd headline from Reuters says, World Health Organization chief says widespread travel bans not needed to beat China virus. A recent headline from Sky News about China actually using the World Health Organization to open Australia's borders says, 
China used the World Health Organization in a bid to open Australia's borders. So, after actually facilitating the spread of the virus outside of China, the WHO is now using Together at Home to push its policies. But who exactly is WHO? Here are its top 10 biggest contributors. Since the United States recently suspended its payments to the WHO, the organization's biggest contributor is now the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Another major contributor to the WHO is the Gavi Alliance, formerly the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization. Both of these organizations are also a part of ID2020, an organization that is advocating for the use of vaccines to implement a global digital ID system using tattoos or microchips. Of course, Bill Gates had to be in Together at Home. To present him, host Stephen Colbert said, Right now, one of the most difficult things about our current ordeal is that we don't know how long it will last. At times like this, I'd turn to one of the smartest guys I know. So tell us, Bill, Melinda, how much longer will we be dealing with all this? And then Bill Gates responds. The eventual end comes when we get a vaccine that protects all of us, not just in the US and the entire world. There's a lot of vaccine candidates uh, that we're backing, and I'm optimistic uh, by late next year, one of those will come out. And we need to make sure that gets out to everyone in the world. In other words, no freedom without a vaccine. This theme is repeated by several people throughout the broadcast. David D. Ho used his credibility as an MD to push the same message. I have no doubt that science will come through, but our work will take time. Please buy us that time. The world must act as one now. Let's stay at home together, flatten the curve together, and give scientists the time needed to develop solutions to end this pandemic. In other words, no freedom without a vaccine. Actor Henry Golding was used to praise Gavi. He says, and The organization is also working to make sure that once a vaccine is ready, it will be available to anyone who needs it. Thank you to all the scientists and researchers working to keep all generations safe from COVID-19. Throughout the event, the messages were so repetitive and carefully worded that we were basically swimming in neuro-linguistic programming. While most messages began by thanking healthcare workers because they needed something that everyone could agree on, the messages quickly moved to the subtle promotion of a global government through the use of specific phrases. The Director General of the World Health Organization had a word to say. Today, we come together as one to express our common humanity. COVID-19 has taken so much from us, but it has also given us unique opportunity to put aside our differences, to break down barriers. I want to thank Lady Gaga, the many artists and humanitarians, global citizen, my friend Hugh Evans, and the United Nations for bringing us together as one world, together at home. Other figures from the United Nations had similar messages. The United Nations Secretary General also addressed the world. Gutierrez said, Together, we will defeat this virus and rebuild a fairer world as united global citizens and United Nations. Michelle Obama and Laura Bush appeared together with a globalist message. They said, Tonight, we stand with the people of the world. The coming days will not be easy, but this global family of ours is strong. Of course, Oprah had to be there. And if you couldn't guess, her message was in line with everyone else. Tonight, we stand as one world, united in our fight to rid the world of this disease. All these people are saying the exact same thing. They're using New World Order, One World Order buzzwords. Promoting mega corporations and organizations. Together at Home promoted several mega corporations that happen to be tightly associated with the global elite. Disguised as thank you for your support messages, these Promotional ads actually glorified some of the most powerful organizations on Earth. 
Not only do they completely dominate their respective industries, but they also take part in elite gatherings such as the Bilderberg meetings and the World Economic Forum to shape global policies. There was an ad for the Rockefeller Foundation. Founded by John D. Rockefeller Sr., the Rockefeller Foundation shaped the world as we know it. For over a century, the foundation funded a number of powerful organizations, such as the Council on Foreign Relations, and it helped propel entire fields of study, such as social sciences, psychiatry, communications, and eugenics. An entire book could be written explaining the profound impact of the Rockefeller Foundation on society today. However, one single quote from David Rockefeller's book, Memoirs, goes right to the core of it all. In the book, he writes, For more than a century, ideological extremists at either end of the political spectrum have seized upon well-publicized events, such as my encounter with Castro, to attack the Rockefeller family for the inordinate influence they claim we wield over the American political and economic institutions. Some even believe we are part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists, and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure. One world, if you will. If that's the charge, I stand guilty, and I am proud of it. On several occasions, the hosts were used to praise various organizations. It was a sad sight to see. In one skit, Jimmy Kimmel thanked Apple for its generous donation to the World Health Organization. He also thanked Apple for babysitting his children for the past month. I want to take a moment now to thank Apple because Apple, the company, not the fruit, donated a very generous amount to the World Health Organization. And I would also like to personally thank Apple for babysitting my children over the last month. For real. Thanks, Apple. While this was meant as a joke, they really want to raise our children through their screens. Later, Jimmy Fallon thanked Bloomberg Philanthropies and Mike Bloomberg, the elite billionaire who owns a media conglomerate. Tonight, we thank Bloomberg Philanthropies and, of course, Mike Bloomberg for all their relief work from helping countries in Africa prepare their healthcare systems to providing meals to public workers in hospitals. In short, this entire thing was a shameless infomercial for the global elite, even though there is no globe. Just saying, just saying. In conclusion, Together at Home brought in audiences using Billie Eilish, Taylor Swift, and Lady Gaga. But it was much more than a concert. It was the global elite rearing its ugly head and using its celebrity puppets to sing its praise. It was also about celebrities telling the masses to embrace their lives confined at home. Sorry, sorry, I meant sheltered. Sheltered at home. And to accept a new normal. This event was tailored for the World Health Organization in order for them to take center stage during this crisis. I did air quotes because you can't see me, but air quotes. Crisis. So they can allow their contributors, such as Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, to gain positions of authority. They are directing humanity towards the one world order quick, fast, and in a hurry. The little bit of privacy and rights we still have left are quickly being undermined in order for the elite's ultimate dream to become a reality. The one world system that we are now entering will be the end of any and all freedoms that we once held near and dear to our hearts. If that makes you upset, remember, you can always give yourself a self-hug. This has been ODD TV. Thanks for watching. Kill the programming and never sleep again. Take care.